All right, we're going to look at the uh, some of the ideas behind the second project. And what we're going to do is first state the goals for this uh, video, talk a little bit about this idea of constraints, define this term parameter, discuss what we mean by that, and some of the uh, problems associated with this idea. And then I'm just going to go through with a, a made-up example and look at uh, how we would uh, tackle uh, some of the issues and, and look at this idea of uh, sensitivity of parameters for this example. Okay, so after this video you should be able to look at a system with two constraints, figure out where both constraints are satisfied, and go through and perform a sensitivity analysis or look at the sensitivity of the different parameters within the system. So the idea behind this constraints is you've got two functions and these functions come from applying some basic physical principles or observations and you uh, want to figure out where both of these constraints are satisfied. Now part of the issue here is that these functions are not linear so finding the solutions can be non-trivial uh, and we can have multiple solutions. So for example in this case there's three places where both functions are satisfied simultaneously. So at that place, uh, both x and y satisfy uh, this, both equations. At this location, x and y satisfy both equations. And here, x and y satisfies both equations. And in terms of figuring out which one is appropriate, at this, once you get to that, then you've got to fall back on your physical uh, principles and physical ideas or context and decide uh, which one is the best solution in terms of what's going on in the, in the physical situation. Okay. Now these uh, equations are developed by applying basic physical principles. And oftentimes there are certain constants in these equations that you don't know in advance. So you just say this is going to be some, uh, this value is going to be constant and we'll decide what it's going to be later. You perform some kind of experiment and you uh, figure out from the experiment what the values are. There's a couple problems with that. These models don't take everything into account and there's some error due to the model itself. Additionally, there's going to be some errors incorporated, errors that flow from the experiment itself. When you run the experiment, there's going to be some randomness, randomness uh, that comes out of this and each time you run the experiment, you're going to get different approximations for the parameters. So the question then becomes, if you're off by a little bit from your parameter, what's going to happen to your final results? Right? So you want to know what's going to happen to your conclusions if a parameter is changed by some small amount. Okay. So these constants that we have in the model, we're going to call that a parameter. Right? You just assume it's a constant. At the same time, though, if you change the context, you change the physical context, look at a different species, look in a different location, the value of those constants may be different. And we want to ask, if, when you look at your system, which parameter is going to be most important in terms of uh, uh, making a, a bigger difference in your final conclusions if, it's makes a, if there's a small change in that parameter. So as a quick example, suppose we've got uh, two functions. So we've got e to the minus 0.3x times 5, looks like this. And we've got this other uh, equation here, g, and you know that this is going to be the general form. And now you run an experiment, and you figure out that r has to be minus 0.05. Now, what happens if you're off by some small amount? What's going to happen? Well, if I make r a little bit bigger, our estimate of x and y is going to be that x is going to be a little smaller and y is going to be a little larger. If we make, if the r is a little bit smaller in actuality, then your estimate for x would get bigger and your estimate for y would get smaller. Okay, so let's look at an example. This is just uh, made up to make things a little bit easier for us to figure out what's going on or have some experience with this. Suppose we have a system and we, uh, we develop these two different uh, models and say that our system has to satisfy both of these. And this value for A is some constant for a given system. This value of P is a constant for some system. C is a constant. And B is a constant. Now, these are not functions the way they're written, so I need to solve for one variable in terms of the other. So our two variables are the mass 
and the temperature. And we're going to assume that the mass is positive. This temperature is in Kelvin, so it's got to be positive. And in this case, what do we have? We have, to, we're going to solve one of these, or both of these equations for one of the variables. And I'm just going to arbitrarily pick M, because I'm just from looking at it, it looks like solving for M is going to be easier in terms of the algebra. So let's look at the first equation. Oops, I'm sorry, before we do that, Suppose we ran an experiment and we got some estimates for these parameters. So that's A, B, C, P, and B. And I'm going to look at the sensitivity for just C. Uh, for the project, you're going to look at the sensitivity for all of these things and compare. But I just want to focus now on what does it mean to look at the sensitivity for a single parameter. All right, so let's look at the first equation. Again, I want to solve for M. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by e to the c times t to the minus 270. Whatever I do to the right, i got to do to the left. So if I do that, these two things will cancel. I'm left with that equation. Now for this, what am I going to do? This is the second equation. I'm going to solve for m. See, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I could write a 3. Multiply both sides by e to the b times t to the minus 270. And now notice this will give me an equation for m squared. For that, now I'm going to take the square root. I'm going to have a plus or minus when I take the square root. Because this is mass, I only have to take the positive value. So if I solve this equation for m, I'll get this expression. Now I have my two equations. Uh, just going back and looking at the first equation, right? we're going to look at C oops, and ask what happens for, for uh, different values for C. So for the, um, careful, this is the uh, estimated value for C. I'm going to ask what happens if I increase C a little bit. So what happens here is right, if my C is a little bit larger than the predicted value, my estimates for y are going to be a little bit larger if the temperature is less than 270. If the temperature is bigger than 270, my estimates for the mass, I said temperature before, sorry. My estimates for the mass are going to be a little larger if the temperature is less than 270. If the temperature is greater than 270, our estimates for the mass are going to be a little smaller. If I decrease C, again, it's going to be the same thing on either side of 270 here. If my temperature is less than 270, my estimate for the mass is going to be smaller than what I had before. If my temperature is bigger than 270, my estimate for the mass is going to be a little larger. Okay. So now, going back, so I've got my two equations. Yes. So there's my first equation. There's my second equation. I want to know where the value for, this should be a capital M. These should both be the same. But I want to know where both of these two things are satisfied. So I set the two masses equal, and I solve for the time, or sorry, temperature. And if I do that, I get this equation right here. Okay. And now, I, since I know my values for these parameters, C, B, A, and P, I can just plug in there and I can figure out what's happening. Okay. Again, from the experiments, Right, we had these values for A, C, P, and B. And again, I'm just going to focus on this and ask what happens. So I can calculate T, or the temperature, for a given value of C. And I'll get some value. Suppose I now decrease the value of C, and I'm going to just decrease it by 5%. And I'm going to ask, what is the change? But in this case, I'm asking for the average rate of change. So what do I do? I take my temperature when C was 0.45. I take my temperature when I decrease this value of C by 5%. And then I divide by the difference in those values for C. So I take my 0.45 and then I subtract the, uh, this value of C when I decrease it by 5%. And if I do that, my average rate of change is minus 2.77. Likewise, if I make C a little bit larger, and I calculate the average rate of change the same way, 
then my average rate of change is going to be minus 2.58. Okay. Now, uh, for the project, you're going to go through and you're going to do this for a 1% change, a minus 1% change, and look at what's happening. Then you're going to do the exact same thing for A. You're going to start over, find a value for A. So you're going to find a temperature for this value for A, decrease A by some small amount, and then find an average rate of change. You do that for P, you do that for B, and then you compare. And the, value, the average rate of change that has the largest magnitude and absolute value, that parameter is going to be the most sensitive to small changes in the value of that parameter. Okay, thank you.